I don't try to have power and influence. I'm not going to play favorites. I'm not going to pull my punches. I'm in this business to cut through the BS. When people ask, how are things going? I say, good enough. Do I think about retiring? Yeah, every morning when I get out of bed. But I still like cutting through the political bullshit. That's what I do best. Good writing is good thinking. I write what I think should happen from my point of view. George Skelton has a sense of history that no one else doing journalism in California has. He started when Pat Brown was governor. So he's got this breadth of knowledge that is unparalleled. Pat Brown was very warm. Jerry was a cheapskate, and that's why he kept spending down. Ronald Reagan had a press conference every week. I can't remember the last time Newsom had a real scheduled press conference. Schwarzenegger expected a little more kinder coverage than what he got. On a personal basis, they're all pretty good people, Republicans and Democrats, mostly, mostly. I tell you, most of people here in Sacramento, the first thing they read with the LA Times on Monday and Thursday is the skeleton column. And it's the most informed journalism in California today. His words are weapons. If he aims one of his sentences at you, you probably think, yeah, maybe I had that coming. Locking up Rod Wright makes a safer question mark. It's a waste of jail space. He was convicted of saying he lived one place when he lived another place. Stupid law. Sorry kids, you're stuck in crappy classrooms because the governor can't multitask. But maybe this is a little nasty. I got suspended from Twitter. I wrote some negative stuff people thought on Newsom, so they knocked me off. So screw it, I don't want to do that anyway. George Skelton has always has a way of being very direct. People always would say that, you know, he's a cranky old man. And uh, which is true. He's a curmudgeon, and everyone respected him. I've been called worse. Curmudgeon, sure, it's better than jerk. I was a musician as a kid. I used to enjoy just sitting down at a piano and making up stuff. It's a creative process, and writing is too. And I think one led to the other. So I'm a sports writer with UPI in San Francisco. And my assignment was to cover the 1961 Major League All-Star Game. Warren Spahn, who was probably the greatest left-handed pitcher of all time, he walks up to me and he sees this credential on my chest. He uses a derogatory name for a woman. And he grabs it off my chest, puts it in his pocket. So I told myself, there's a lot of uh, assholes in politics, but at least they do things that are important. So I went into the bureau chief the next day and asked for a transfer to Sacramento that September 1961. My first day at the LA Times was January 4th, 1974. Writing a column, my job is to write what I think and my opinion. It's got to be accurate. Politicians look for fairness. And I'm not going to take any cheap shots without the facts being there. There is a difference between honest criticism that, and people who just yell and scream. And um, so when George criticized you, when he criticized me, I remember that it made me question whether or not I was doing the right thing. He has tremendous influence. Because of, because of what he says, because of how he says it. Lots of times I would call him to try to get his support on something that would help me get a vote in the legislature. I mean, you can't say it at the time, but you're damn right I did it. I got unsolicited advice from George Skelton from time to time. And it was usually during the times where things were not going well. And so there was a story that they wrote in, the, in one of the local newspapers there about Arnold, you know, calling us girly man, and then in response, I said something about, you know, I don't think I'm a girly man. Um, you know, I certainly don't wear makeup. Uh, and George called me uh, the very day that 
that article was in the newspaper and said, what are you thinking? <laughs> that was his, that was George's, called me, the voice on the other side said, what are you thinking? What he was really saying to me in that statement was, you have to work with the governor and the two of you have to make things happen. Is that the best way to do it? What most people don't know is that George Skelton is actually the one that is responsible in a way for me running for governor. I was on a movie set. I was doing Terminator 3, minding my own business. And I read the story about the recall and I called him. And uh, he said, well, thanks very much. And he says, well, you will be perfect. You will be a great candidate. And then he goes through the policy things. And you're for this, and you're for that, and you're against this, and you're against it. And I'm answering it. I did not know this could potentially be an interview. And so sure enough, the next day, I opened up the other times, George writes. All of a sudden, from that point on, people were bombarding me and saying, this is a great idea, you should run for governor. I said, look, I'm doing my movie, I don't have time for all this stuff. But then eventually, it did drag me into the whole thing. George actually was right there from the beginning. I've had a great relationship always with him, and I respect him highly. Hi, this is George Skelton at the LA Times. I'm trying to write about the Santa Monica Freeway uh, reopening, repair. The 10 gets burnt in an arson fire, and it's shut down. And one journalist remembers the time in 1994 when the 10 collapsed in the Northridge earthquake, and the state figured out a way to reopen it two months ahead of schedule. And so George is writing that column today. So yeah, the sense of history matters. I got the story from George, and it's my favorite story. He was covering President Reagan, and they were in Houston, Texas. And the president was talking to some young adults about life. They need to work out, that they need to eat right. When you get along to where I am, you find out taking care of that machinery sure pays off when you get along to this stage and you can still tie your own shoes and pull on your socks without sitting down <laughs> and do a lot of things that are much more enjoyable than that. And, uh, <laughs> so they came back on Air Force One and George was in there and he said, were you talking about sex? And the president just smiled and George says, well, let me ask it a different way, Mr. President. You're a 73-year-old man. Can you do everything today that you were able to do 30, 40 years ago? And the president smiled and said, yes, I can, George. How many reporters in the president's private quarters in Air Force One could ask the president directly how a sex life is? Only George Skelton. I had a tremendous interview with him after that. I knew I could ask him anything after that, you know. I would say George is unique in the sense that He's a fella who really thinks about California, understands the unique nature of the challenges of 482 cities, 58 counties, 1,008 school districts, 5,226 subdivisions of government, and all corners of a state that's the fourth largest economy in the world. One should tell him while he's still a buyer that he's a fantastic journalist. You know, because people always say those things you know, with the state, the, the, the memorial or something like that. I think that this is a better time than that to know. And so 50 years at the LA Tigers, he's been writing his whole life. So this is a great time to celebrate and to tell him, hey, you did a great job. And this state and the voters and the readers have been enriched by your input and by your writing. And so this is basically, I think, what it is all about.